Oh, that's a long one. <laughs> the, the anticipation. Suspense. <laughs> Makes the hot girl find it. That's right. That's right. Well, today, as we just told you, we're going to uh, jump into some buy, sell, hold. We're going to start with Aaron Jones. Mr. How, Aaron Jones? How do, you guys, how do you guys feel about that? Mr. Aaron Jones? Jay Wayne, uh, let's let's start the bidding off. And uh, <laughs> obviously... <laughs> Start the betting at one <laughs> right. hundred. I don't think there's any need to say a two here because I think anybody would give up a two for yeah, Aaron Jones day, yeah. right now. I don't know. Maybe Big Code wouldn't. Two. Yeah. Okay. okay. All right. All right. All right. That's a, just a precursor to what's what's to come here. So, just in in terms of draft picks next year for Aaron Jones right now, obviously Ty Montgomery got traded and part of this trade talk again, that we're going to do on Patreon. So now Aaron Jones is a little bit more freed up. Are you, were you into paying a first round before the trade? And now is, does it intrigue you more like poppy on highly questionable? Are you see, see, yes, very intriguing. <laughs> <laughs> very intriguing. <laughs> uh, man, I wish I had something funny to say. Like he does. He crushes. He's that. awesome, man. He's so, so good. good. Uh, it's the best idea they ever had. Right. <laughs> <laughs> I don't, know that I would have given up a first uh, before the so Ty Montgomery the Ty Montgomery trade. move makes moves that much earth for you to say that I, I feel just so much better just that there's a two-headed monster here now maybe not even the monster like a two-headed like <laughs> mid-level boss right right well it's, it's a video just, game reference overall the hype is what was that mid-level level boss, boss. From, what was that from the, uh, I mean, just a lot of a lot of things had mid-level bosses boss. that yeah. you gotta beat San yeah. Andreas the um sure or well, we play a little Zelda Turtles in Time, some right. Super Nintendo. They'd have a mid-level boss. wasn't quite, You weren't quite ready for Bebop and Rocksteady, right. but or Shredder. Or, uh, <laughs> what was that game? What was the San Andreas? What was the name of the game? Grand Theft Auto. Grand Theft Auto. That's it. The mid-level, the mid-level boss. Yeah. That yeah. game is what's wrong with America. But anyway, whoa, the, whoa, whoa. Um, I won't disagree. Um, so the, the Grape to me, Street all day, though. No? To me, it's been a conglomerate of things for Aaron Jones. The hype has just been building and it's been on an exponential curve yeah upward. there's been a, lo- a ton of just everyone just loves this guy right so we've much. gotten questions on patreon should i sell should i buy aaron jones for a first and this was like before he had really done much at all this season like i'm and i had to go back and check box scores to make sure i didn't miss something like did aaron jones just just bust out and i and i missed it but and this is before lot, this past week much like a lot of these guys we're going to talk about there's a big circle of people who like this player already further expediting the price tag right so i mean now no time montgomery you're into the first i I think so i mean he's a running back and he's 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 he looks great on the field he looks great when you throw it to him or whether when you hand it off to him now looking at some of the numbers he's facing boxes on an average have six and a half guys in the box because it's aaron Rodgers' offense Mm -hmm. and this would be the plus side of the absolute packers offense here there is a there is a Downside, but the, the plus right. side is is that it should be easy sledding, much like you saw uh, the run for Aaron Jones this week. I'm not saying that he isn't talented and didn't have a have a nice run on his scamper this week to get in the end zone, but once he got into that middle of the field, there wasn't anybody around, right? And he was gone, right? Which is is what's going to happen, right? And and I did he dropped a ball, a big a big drop. He his hands to me aren't my favorite, but they're not the worst, right? He's he not Ty Montgomery. Didn't have a ton of catches in college, but 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 did okay. Uh, I just it's so hard to get a running back, and if it's been up and down whether the running back for Aaron Rodgers is a guy you want or don't want, you know, for a while Eddie Lacy was hot. Now he's obviously fell off big time. Uh, no, no longer to be found. I, I don't know. I, I love the talent. I really like Jamal Williams, which is why I've always been kind of hesitant on Aaron Jones. I've always been you're more in the minority, intrigued. right? But I, I think I was Jamal Williams is a very solid player. I don't think that there there's a crazy gap in between the two, which has been somewhat of my reservation. They're different, but I think both of them are are pretty good players. Aaron Jones probably has more uh, upside of of big plays and, and the spark such. score is a little higher i guess and the spark score is higher if you look at the snap counts over like the last three weeks everything has been trending in aaron jones's direction sure. and so he played i think 33 out of 52 snaps last week and i don't know if those are exact numbers but it's a it's a pretty Ballpark, close pretty close and 
It, so if you give Definitely me the guy, standing up double. If he's going to be getting that many snaps and he's going to be getting this many carries and they just got rid of one of the three heads of this lower level boss group here, <laughs> then mid level. I'm I got to be in. Give me a running back for a first round pick. Absolutely. I I don't I'm not that excited about this upcoming class of running backs. You don't know where you what you might be able to do with that first round pick. I mean, no one studies rookies more than we do and when I it's don't, time. When, when it's, it's time. time, right? We're not. We haven't been doing that for next year's class just yet. But if you guys like, could pay me enough that it was my job, I'd be able to tell you about these rookies right now. <laughs> right. <laughs> but I got things to do. Five dollar holla. Not Patreon. the job. Uh, but well, before I kick it to Big Co here, let's. If it, Jamal Williams, where are you stand on that? If we put it pick wise, because I don't think anybody's nearly given up what they would give up to to give Aaron Jones to get Aaron Jones right now. So. We'll start with the six, the the second with Jamal Williams. Would you give up a second to get Jamal Williams? Because nobody's giving up a first right now to get Jamal Williams. No, you can't give up the first. I, I don't think I'd give up the second. I mean, mm. no. Why would you give up a second for Jamal Williams? Don't shoot the messenger here. I'm asking <laughs> the questions. The re one of the things that that. that but why wouldn't you? This could easily be. You're saying it's been trending towards Aaron Jones these last couple of weeks. This next week, you could be like, "What the hell happened, to Aaron Jones?" It's been the Jamal Williams with the higher snap. You know, there's just really no rhyme or reason for anything. I don't think Jamal Williams is like is is a terrible player. I think he's a good player. Well, I mean, did you were you ready well, to go somewhere before he changed the three well, Jamal I, Williams? I, I just wanted to see where you stood on him because I know that you've been a Jamal Williams guy. We I haven't am. been Jamal Williams haters by any means. He just hasn't done anything for you at all this year. And you thought he, there was a hype. The coaches tried to talk him up. They were like, Jamal Williams is about to have a career year. That's what right. McCarthy came out and said. And you're like, oh, shit. And you won that guy on your team, I guess, at that point. And he just hasn't done anything for you. He's been trending in the opposite direction. On top of that, you got Aaron Jones, who's like a folk hero. Like, people love Aaron Jones. People mm -hmm. want Aaron and, Jones and to people, be good. People the second Aaron already Jones didn't is good. like Jamal Williams. They right. were just, he's garbage. So, so just the name cachet alone for Aaron Jones to me is worth grabbing him for a first because if he comes out the next couple of weeks and is the guy, he's going to be worth more than that. And there's a chance that, yeah, maybe Jamal Williams comes in here. He's a better pass protector, which I was kind of stunned at the. Solid grade that PFF had given Aaron Jones, but he's only they don't ask these running backs to pass protect basically at all. They're always like running routes. There's very little pass protection snaps even accounted for when you look at the numbers on pro football focus. So, which I don't always agree with the grades on that's, there. That's but. fair too, but I mean, the, the number of pass protection snaps is probably fairly accurate mm -hmm. where they actually were asked to stay in and, and block. Uh, so, I, I'd give up a third, I guess. And, and maybe you should give up a second. I just don't think I can do it right now. So would you say you were wrong on Jamal Williams? I, I, I mean, I don't know that I ever came out and pounded the table for Jamal Williams. We, I said we, that we, we've got some strong Jamal Williams cases we, out there. We have. We have. I think he's looked pretty, pretty solid at times. And so, yeah, maybe I've been wrong. Maybe I've probably come on here and said I would give up a two or something to get him, and that, that hasn't paid off at all for me. I, I think, don't think I've ever gone and said I needed to I give up a first to get Jamal him. Jamal Williams needs the bell cow role to be as good as he could be. And Aaron Jones is not. That's, I can agree with that. I think the uh, big co same question. Uh, well, I think a couple start, weeks ago, start, let's start with eliminate Jamal Williams. We'll start with Aaron Jones. Well, they're, they, they're inverse route. Well, just in, the, they're inversely they're both, related the way this team. I want to give you the opportunity to answer the question of with the first for the, Aaron Jones. A couple weeks ago, Aaron Rodgers came out and said, we need to get Aaron, Aaron Jones, the ball more. And if, you know, Jay Wayne getting some snap counts for us and, you know, three weeks in a row, Aaron Jones' snap counts are rising. And the other two players are, they defensive. have to be going down because of the way this team, you know, they're, they're a pass first offense. They got Aaron Rodgers. They don't line it up and I form and pound it all the way down the field. That's not how they roll. They're not Seattle. So if they ha it has to be an inverse relationship and it's been hurting Jamal Williams. And I would agree with the way you put that. Jamal Williams is kind of like a Jordan Howard kind of guy. He he needs that. For, he needs the twenty carries, and he can get you that hundred yards if you give it to him. But and it, but Aaron Jones, and you've seen him in roles with I don't, I, uh, his backup quarterback last year, where he did get that, and he was a pretty good player. Absolutely. Last year when Aaron Rodgers got hurt, Jamal Williams was crushing it. And if you say he wasn't, then you're not watching TV. And if you say right now that Aaron Jones doesn't look like a more electric running back than Jamal Jamal Williams, you're not watching TV. Like, you're not watching the games if you don't think Aaron Jones looks better than Jamal Williams. And if you 
won't concede that Jamal Williams played really, really good last year, then I don't want to talk to you either. You I know mean, what I mean? Some, there's some so, yards per carry that would suggest that he wasn't great and some attempts and didn't turn out to be these great games. Oh, but, but I don't you could judge say my, yeah. Aaron Jones' pass catching and yards and catches last year don't even come close to what Jamal Williams did. Yeah. Like, so Jamal, I, don't, I don't equate everything know? to that, but what I saw on the field from Jamal Williams, out sometimes – Everyone says stats, numbers don't lie, stats don't lie. They lie. When you're watching the game flow and what the player was doing for the team, I think Jamal Williams was an important cog in that wheel and was playing well for them last year. Aaron Jones obviously wasn't 100%. around her and doing other things and, and you know, whatever. But anyway. Good. So the thing about it for me is Jay Wayne brought this up before we got going today when we were kind of chatting about this before we started. And he reminded me of that Dallas Cowboys game last year about um, Aaron Jones and Aaron Jones looked like he was ready to take the league by storm last year against the Cowboys. And he just looked ridiculous last year in that game. And I don't, between that game and the end of the year, somehow, some way, the coaches decided it was Jamal Williams' turn. And between, you know, and, and yeah, from week 10 to week 17, Jamal Williams had seven out of eight games, 15 or more carries. Right. And it's just like, so I can't control, I, I have to play my fantasy team. Like what I, there is a cis dynasty and you do, I understand you can latch on to a guy early and hang on to him and ride the ups and the downs and stuff like that. But my problem with Aaron Jones earlier in the, in the season coming off of last year was the fact that they've done nothing but show me that Jamal Williams is the guy, but then a couple, obviously Aaron Jones goes and gets suspended. So that took care of that. You throw in now that, you know, I like a good weed guy though. He's got, he's out a good weed guy. He's out. But so now Tom Montgomery leaves. But the problem with that is, is he had, you know, two carries last week, four carries a week before that, four carries. He's never had more than five carries all year and more and, and only had he had two catches or less ever since week one. You know, in the first two weeks, obviously, Aaron Jones wasn't there. So Tom Montgomery has been basically an afterthought on this offense, even with Randall Cobb hurt, which has obviously blown my mind because I was calling Tom Montgomery like a, you know, a cheat code Swiss Army PPR point guy because as soon as a running back got hurt, he was going to be playing running back. And when it wasn't if, but it was basically when Randall Cobb got hurt, Tom Montgomery would be yeah. in there doing that. Tom Montgomery and, had times last year where he was doing his thing and looked really, really good. Oh, don't forget. But Tom Montgomery was baby David Johnson to start the year last right. year. I, I didn't forget that. It's just he wasn't doing anything this year, so I don't think him leaving necessarily catapults Aaron Jones farther that much farther up the list for me. The problem, and I know this isn't fair, but you take away Aaron Jones' 33-yard touchdown, and obviously the rest of that drive still gets completed in one way, shape, or another, but you're talking about 11 carries for 50 yards before that 30-yard touchdown mm -hmm. and no and two catches for no yard. Like He still hasn't had more than two catches all year. Well, and everyone wants to quickly point to that he's averaging 6.7 yards a carry and Jamal Williams' career average is this and that, and it's which is, I, I get it to a point, but like the stats lie. I'm, I'm sorry, but they do. Well, there's a difference. When, when Jamal Williams is in the game, the defense is like, if he gets the ball, he's going to be this kind of runner. Right. And, the, and, and situationally, Jamal Williams might be in there trying to get a third and one carry. So right. you're talking about yards per carry. That just it's, it's, not a tr it's not a great stat because he might have been getting a carry from the two. The best he could do was two yards, mm -hmm. you know, versus Aaron Jones gets one for 33. Obviously, he looks great. But he does have a higher than five yards per carry average in every single game that he's played, which is, you know, good. He, he's electric. I'm not trying to take anything away. Aaron Jones, the player. If you put Aaron Jones on the Rams right now and Todd Gurley gets traded, I would love Aaron Jones. It's just my problem with Aaron Jones is Aaron Rodgers and the fact that he, if it's not Jordy Nelson, it's not Randall Cobb, now it's uh, it's a big tight end. Uh, you know, it's um, Jimmy Graham. Devontae Adams is a stud. They got a couple of rookie running, but rookie wide receivers running around. And they, they just, the same problem that we had with the rookie, with the running backs last year for the Packers still exists. They just don't hand it off that much. He's not getting it stuck in his gut. Well, yeah, can he, you know, can he be a really good serviceable RB two for sure? But I'm not in a hurry to pay a first round pick for Aaron Jones. Yeah, I mean, when you the the downside of the Packers running backs, as we alluded to yeah. in the beginning, is of this Aaron Rodgers, and the upside well, is the Aaron Rodgers, right? Is is that you're facing <laughs> lighter boxes for the most part, and sometimes you know on third and ones, like you mentioned, maybe whoever's in there and they they're just trying to get that one yard on a on a pound it kind of deal in the box is a little bit more stacked but i know i don't know what the the number is this year or last year but i know when we were when i was saying that i didn't want anything to do with ty montgomery 
last year, my you know, it was just because he was a fourth round numbers. startup. Pick. Well, yeah, well, yeah, but also the fact that like from the forty moving into the red zone, yes, the the Packers just didn't hand the ball off. No. And in order for your running back to score the touchdowns, which is what you're inevitably wanting, unless he's just going to catch a ridiculous amount of balls, right? Um, it was going to be really hard. Um, and I, I don't know how much that's changed, but I don't think it's changed a ton with Aaron Rodgers. Obviously, last year, if you look at it, it probably changed because Aaron well, Rodgers wasn't hurt. out there. Good point. But the, the downside and the upside are, are, like you said, are Aaron Rodgers. You could run against a lighter front, and sometimes it's going to work out, and you're going to bust him off, or somebody's going to grab you by the foot when before you get five yards down the field and tackle you, and it's not going to be the same run that you just had for however 33 yards against the Rams. Yeah. Um, and it is the fact that the that the Packers just don't necessarily hand it off a ton in the red zone and don't really hand it off really inside the 20 too much. And maybe I'm wrong right now. Maybe their stats proving me wrong. But I know two years ago that that was just what they were doing. I can't imagine it's too much different because the running game hasn't changed that yeah. much. You know, the amount of attempts and, and the amount that they do run the ball. There was a game where Aaron Jones, I, I forget which one it was, uh, got him all the way down to the one yard line on a big long run. They gave him the same him the ball. That, that was the same friend game. Right. And they gave him the ball on the very next play and he got stuffed and then he did, they didn't they do gave it him one shot right. and that was it. But mm-hmm. they did give him one shot. That's, that's, that's You might get one shot. All right. So would you give up a first round pick for Aaron Jones right now? I mean, I guess if I was 8 0. And the way it, you know, if I was 8-0 and I had been one of our Patreon members is 8-0 at the moment, and he said, "Can I? would I give up a second-round pick for Jalen Rashard because all I got is Tevin Coleman and Dalvin Cook's hurt? I mean, I'm 8-0 because I've got Patrick Mahomes and a good wide, bunch of good wide receivers. Maybe I'd give up that guaranteed playoff berth draft pick. Like, worst-case scenario, you're that's 1-9, 1-10, 111 like that, and then you think maybe Aaron Jones helps you win a championship, I guess. But I'm not. I'd rather not. And if I could get a a first rounder from somebody who's not eight and zero, and it looks like I got a shot of it of it making making being a, a decent draft pick, it I don't have to doesn't have to be the one one doesn't have to be the worst team in the league. But if I got a middling team and I got a shot at the one five one six one seven type pick, I would take that for Aaron Jones. If I I mean nobody can afford to trade a running back. That's let's be honest, it's twenty eighteen. But you can't afford to was, get rid of a running back. If there was one that you could afford to trade, it'd probably be him because he really hasn't been hasn't been leaning on him. You haven't haven't been, been. He hasn't he was out of your lineup for two weeks and then he probably hasn't been really in your lineup for the last couple of weeks just trying to figure it out. So if there was an expendable one, it would be him, I think. It um, could be. I mean, obviously you could be sitting there just trying to tread water and Aaron Jones could come through here being the you know, knight in shining armor, but let's just last week, Aaron Jones is just doing his thing. Jamal Williams steals the short touchdown and Aaron Jones busts off the 30 yarder. But again, if he doesn't get that, he's got you nine point eight points, you know, like I don't want to give up the first round pick for the 10 or 12 point guy. You know, it's like, that's, I, that's just not what I want to go after. What I, I mean, obviously you said it, you know, would you give a two? And I said, yeah, like no doubt. Like there's, the a, a second round pick has plenty of value, but like that first round pick has it just sparkles in people's eyes. Like I'm not, I I, I can do something with that. Yeah, well, I could see I could see a scenario where I would I would trade Aaron Jones for a first, but I, I could also definitely see a scenario where I give up. The well, first like Casey's Aaron saying, Jones. if if you're feeling good about your if you're if you're not winning, then you probably don't need to give up that first for Aaron Jones because you're about to have a good pick. And if you are winning and you you're you haven't been, you, if you're winning, it's not because of Aaron Jones. So Casey's right about that. If you're winning and you're doing really good and all of a sudden Aaron Jones is coming to life on your bench, then obviously you're excited about it and you probably don't need him anyway because you've been winning. Every once in a while you could be winning with, but you know. Well, it's basically like. Maybe you had Gio Bernard plugged in for a couple weeks and then maybe you had Latavius Murray plugged in for a couple weeks. It's just like. Well, we're going to talk about Marlon Mack and and Philip Lindsay and and Cohen here on the rest of this podcast. And it's really like all those guys. You've missed your window of opportunity to be able to purchase them for probably even a lower end first right now. Like you're not getting, I don't think you're not getting any of those guys for a lower end first, maybe Lindsay for, for whatever and reason, Aaron but, Jones too. I would, but, but all, I yeah, would that's what, we're still on Aaron Jones okay. right now. That's what I'm talking about. Like you're not getting Mac. No, you're probably not getting Cohen and most likely you're not going to get Lindsay. We're going to address all these guys and, and whether we, we are or are not doing yeah. that. But like, are you willing to miss the window, right? Because you're saying, oh, well, I'm not trading him for this eight to ten point guy. But if he's going to be a guy who's maybe 
shifting into the front runner of this offense, he could easily be a guy who's getting a few more touches a game and leading the offense, curbing your floor and giving you upside I in this that, offense. I see, there's no doubt he provi- he provides I would say a ceiling is, and an upside, but he's not going to be your goal line back. First of all, Aaron Rodgers. How do you Rodgers, know that though? Because you got Jamal Williams, and he he's not there. I'm I'm, it, I'm I'm making an. I don't know that. Okay, let's say I'm, not, at, I'm just making an educated. And I, guess. I I'm telling like I I'm like Jamal an, Williams as much as the next guy. Aaron that. Jones and Jamal Williams. I'm gonna double check this year, but have the same exact amount of red zone touches and it's got to be a very small amount it it is that's what i'm saying uh, and, and you're splitting it maybe okay, you're not so splitting it between the 20s jamal williams has seven aaron jones has five aaron jones has two less games. he missed a couple games yeah so all right that's my point is even if aaron jones gets more work between the What's, 20s jamal williams is probably the goal line back if it's not aaron aaron rogers throwing it and again like we said the same aaron what's, aaron rogers what's Tariq is, cohen's 20 between the 20s uh red zone touches what, what what's even like what's but Christian, Cohen's what's getting Christian passes. McCaffrey passes right no no I understand that and, and Aaron why Jones, can't, Aaron Jones can't get a couple why can't of passes he or what, there, was, he there was a point in time where Ty Montgomery in the beginning of last season was making me look dumb because he was getting some quick check downs he was a former wide receiver sure but I mean uh, there it it could easily s- slide that way if they see if Aaron Rodgers starts seeing hey Aaron Jones is in here a little bit more. If I check it down to him, we've been getting some explosive plays from him. Co- yes. Ooh-hoo-hoo. Cohen has 10 red zone touches, and Lindsey has 17. Ooh. All right. They could, them boys hand it to him for sure. Ooh. They hand it to him. Well, the, like that's my – exactly. Like, he could – the Aaron Rodgers effect. If why Aaron you Jones want, why you want Aaron Jones? Dog. Why you want Aaron Jones running back? Is Aaron Aaron Rodgers running back? Is because they have to they have to defend the entire field, right? So like, yes, if he spreads them out and checks it down to him a couple of times, he probably could run with it for a minute, and that's great. But he just they haven't been doing that, and they haven't been throwing it to. And, and Jamal Williams can catch too, so it it would be very surprising if Jamal Williams went down to basically zero usage. He's already flip-flopped him and he's basically Aaron Jones in the last couple of weeks has been working his way to 60, 30 or, you know, 70, 30, 60, 40, take out, you know, Tom Montgomery. And, and so you don't have another third guy in there, even though it's been a very minimal even though piece. But even though to, yeah, you made that point earlier, even though you're saying that, you know, Tom Montgomery hasn't been getting a ton of usage, but th- there's been some decent snaps for Tom Montgomery just maybe but not they, getting the usage. But they've totally, I mean, maybe it's not perfect and it's not, they didn't bring in a bunch of first round picks, but they totally reloaded their wide receiver core. Sure. When Tom Montgomery was catching all those passes, they really yeah, only, no, no, no. they, I'm, they I'm were just, out of receivers too. I'm just saying right now, Other, even Devontae Adams was hurt. And it, this year, like Ty Montgomery was at some point getting 20 to, to 29 snaps. snaps on the field. Okay. So it uh, Regardless of whether what, he got whether, a target or a rush, he was doing on there, it's just another. Whether he got a target or a rush, he, he was still it, on the if field. He split it evenly. There's there's gonna be you know twelve apiece, and right now it doesn't look like it's being split evenly. So it could be another eighteen and I don't you know nine or whatever for um, Jamal Williams. Well, it, they have a superstar wide receiver who demands targets and touchdowns, and he's a red zone monster. He might have the most touchdowns in the last three years out of all receivers. Some crazy stat like yeah. that. Devontae Adams is an absolute monster, so he takes red. That's that's my point about the whole inside the five, inside the ten. Like Sometimes the Packers don't even get there from 12 yards sure, out, no, 15, no, 20 yards out. It's Devontae they Adams. They didn't get there with Aaron Jones. 33-yard rushing touchdown. Right. And that's the thing about Aaron Jones is he can bust long ones off. He can. Which, yeah. is, which is, again, solid speed with an amazing burst. To my like, point of saying that I think Jamal Williams is more of the bell cow and this is a more of electric guy, so I think the more opportunities you can put him on the field to do some of these electric things. I get it. I'm a little bit, but it's basically I, saying, are, are you willing, which you're not, you said you probably are, Jay Wayne, uh, are you willing to pay for something that hasn't quite reached even half of its potential value to then probably double again if 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 Aaron Jones reaches what the potential value is it's going to double or triple and you know no I don't think I'm anybody's not saying it's not I don't think I'm anybody's saying, saying that they're going to give up one one like I'm not going to I'm not going to trade my 0 and 8 team I'm not going to trade my pick for Aaron Jones but you know if you're anywhere near the middle or lower middle it's not a terrible idea to and I, and I think to preface all this, like I think this is the most indecisive of whether or not I would trade a one for the rest of these guys, whether it's yes or no, is Aaron Jones for me. Cause I, I, I honestly, I don't, I'm not a hundred percent sure, but I'm 
starting to lean more and more. And now that you did eliminate a little Ty Montgomery, although he isn't wasn't getting the run, like the the opportunity to be out on the field a little bit more with Aaron Rodgers just is more of opportunities to say, hey, nobody's around me. Let me bust one for 30 and, and score a touchdown. And I get I like again, I like Jamal Williams a good bit. I, I've been trying to prop him up some of saying, hey, he's not as bad as everyone's making him out to be. And he's still not. And he's not. He's certainly not. Williams. And there's certainly almost no running back situation where there isn't another guy in the fold. Yeah. And why can't Aaron Jones be a little bit more Tariq Cohen and Jamal Williams be a little bit more? Obviously, they're not running it as much as the Bears are, but why can't you have that dynamic, especially when both of them are going to get a little bit more time on the field? So... Coming into this before the trade happened, I was I was mostly saying no of Ty Montgomery being traded. And the Ty Montgomery trade makes me feel just a little bit better about maybe giving a lower end to middle level one away. I would rather go before I before I gave a first round pick for Aaron Jones, which I'm not unless I was basically guaranteed a championship anyway. It's I would give my, I'd rather give a two for Jalen Richard and get that PPR floor every week or maybe even get lucky and get him for two threes and not even have to give up a second round pick because who is Jalen Richard? you know sure. he has he's not a he has no following that's, so I'd, I'd rather take that six for 60 through the air I'd rather put enough. that 12 points that's I'd give enough. up the ceiling but and still keep my first but you're also n- not trading for anything next year like Jalen Richard could be completely irrelevant next year that's true. Right. I'm. A, I have a one league. And I'm. Where, a, I'm. A hunt, I am fine with you saying like, hey, I don't want to give up the one. And if we're looking for running backs, I like giving an example of saying, hey, let me try to get Jalen Richard. I think that's a a great point. He ended up with I don't know 13 or 14 points last week with just getting checkdowns. I think Doug Martin looked good. If you're if we need another cheaper running back, but like, I don't think either one of those guys' future is right. is anywhere near what Aaron Jones could, could be. be. And I get you. Part I'll, of the I'll reason while we were off, Mike, you were saying that you didn't like. Uh, Aaron Jones was because of McCarthy and what he does. Now, who knows how much, obviously, Aaron Rodgers doesn't have autonomy like some of these other quarterbacks do, and that's part of the reason why them boys uh, clash with each other. But there's a lot of whispers of McCarthy being even gone after this year, and you know maybe that means there's another running back coming in, or maybe that means the next guy comes in and uses one of these running backs a little bit more heavily installs a system that actually makes people get open and has a more balanced feel much like the Rams, which is where I think you need to live. Yeah, I agree. And Aaron, Aaron Rogers isn't getting any younger. He is 34 going on 35 as he gets older. Maybe he wants to hand the ball off a little bit more. Maybe that's all not the case at all. Uh, but like I got I got Aaron Jones in a, in a team where I'm I'm about I'm trying not to get last place. I'm not making the playoffs and it's been a struggle this year. And I just traded Mark Ingram and acquired Dalvin Cook in a, in a not not straight up, but uh, you got Aaron Jones on that team. I got Aaron Jones. Oh man, you need to get another, go get you another first round pick. Well, so I could, or maybe I just have just keep Aaron Jones. Maybe, and he comes back next year. He's well, on. Is, he's got two more years on his left on his deal. This is part of the reason why I wanted to bring up a lot of these guys, uh, especially on this show uh, this week, is because I feel like they're all a little bit similar in the fact of like. They're kind of like they're not mainstays by any means at this point. So they really could be going either way yep. where the career is. They haven't certainly established themselves as being the guy. A couple of weeks ago, they were cheaper. A couple of weeks from now, they could be more expensive or yeah. they could be cheaper. Half of them, three quarters of them, all of them are more expensive than they were a couple of weeks ago. No doubt about it. Uh, and they've all gone up in value the last sure. month. And for the, sure. You know, so I, that's part of the reason why I kind of wanted to group all these guys together and talk about them as my microphone falls away <laughs> uh, because I do think like you said do you do you and I think this is a good case for is do you want to hang on to these guys are you confident in what they've been doing and what you've seen from them and or your evaluation or do you think you should be ringing the register on these guys and I, and I, I think you're in a in a I think right now I'm you're gonna hold out. I'm gonna a hold. Prime example for this table, I think Big Co is in your situation. He's finding the best pick he could probably find, and he's gonna go ahead and move on from Aaron Jones. Next year, Aaron Jones could be part of your starting lineup. Right. right. I could be Dalvin Cook and Aaron Jones and Tevin Coleman, and I'm crushing. I, all or of a sudden, I went be, from not having any running backs to having awesome three running backs. Or he could be Tom Montgomery. Sure, and he bubbled out, and then He's he a curious went away. Case of Benjamin Button. He doesn't have sickle cell, so that's that's one plus <laughs> in his non Tom Montgomery. Tom Montgomery has sickle cell. Yeah, I think he does. I think I think we went over this yeah. one time. I'm, no, yeah. they really tried to brush it under the rug, but 
I think he had it. some sort of auto, whatever that. Could He's have. got it. Yeah. Really? Yeah. Hmm. I didn't know that. High pitch, really? They couldn't like that. I didn't know. I should have sold, sold Ty Montgomery. Maybe I should sell Aaron Jones right now. Maybe I will. But my my feeling is that I'm probably gonna wait and see how this plays out this season, and and then maybe maybe move on, or maybe maybe I'd ride him out. Like unless he blows an Achilles out. I don't. I don't think you're going to lose a tremendous amount of volume. It, like right now, I think you're closer to the one end of things with Aaron Jones. He could definitely kind of regress back to the the two end of things. I, I think between now and the end of the season, right? I mean, if 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 kind of more along the lines of what Big Coast thinking happens with the, with the Packers, I think he could be kind of more in the two category for for a lot of people at the end of the season. And if he just continues to be kind of where he is right now, I think it'll just be the same narrative of. Oh well, Aaron Jones just needs a little bit more usage, and it'll be so good. So I'll still give you the one. Yeah, I agree with that. I I agree. With that. There's a lot more legs for the upside than the downside. He's, but if he's he just takes this thing and very, runs with he's it, he's very capable. I just don't know if there's anything to take and run with. Yeah, that's that's, that's that, my whole that's, problem. That's why with it. that's why I'm willing to take the one. I don't. It's not the ability. I'm. I don't have a problem with Aaron Jones. I told you last year how much I liked Aaron Jones and his ability. He made NFL people look bad. Like the defenders are paid to tackle him, and they couldn't tackle him. He's good. Yeah. It's just I don't know if there's anything to run with. That's why I'm. That's I'm why I, ta- I need a coach in between change. here because I need well, a and, coach and change. And that from could the happen. And and what the Packers do just makes me offensively makes me not so comfortable. But to again to get back to the argument of. If your evaluation was you like Aaron Jones and you're he's available to get right now and you feel comfortable with him, if it just is a matter of him getting his due, then I think you should pay pay what you think he's worth in that low end first. I think you should do that all day or and or keep your guy and not take that. Right. First See, all right so my problem with that is if you've drafted Aaron Jones in the third round or whatever and you're hanging on to him, I got no problem with that. But if you evaluate evaluated Aaron Jones and you like Aaron Jones. You should have bought him six weeks ago when he was much cheaper. That's my whole in and out on this thing is I just wasn't I I wasn't paying and up. Maybe, you know? And maybe you were trying and with with the two and nobody would give you the two because they felt like they felt the same way about Aaron Jones. And I think an Aaron Jones liker or lover would have been <laughs> trying Respecter. to press trying to press that button on try I think that you've probably been trying to get Aaron Jones for a little while, but I think now that you see like the first would is definitely going to make somebody think about it, even if you liked him a lot, and if yeah, you believe exactly. Him. My point exactly. The one's going to make you look at it, no matter who you offer it for, unless he's a top line stud. All right. Well, let's, let's go a to break. break. Yeah, and we'll be back with more of this uh, similar fantasy football talk <laughs> for your pleasure. <laughs> 